plastic in a universe of materials is an incredibly efficient and robust material. A lot of our lives are enabled because of the idea of plastic. The issue is not plastic as a material or any other material. I think it's us dishonoring material by using it for an incredibly short period of time and then not having a second life for it. We're totally addicted to plastic as a global economy. Plastic is all around us in so many different forms. When there's so many forms of it, it's quite hard to sort it and deal with it and recycle it properly. The human species is about 100 times more wasteful than it was just 70 years ago. So we're producing a lot. Then, if you think about how the solutions to garbage work, what tends to be recycled is not what can be recycled. This is a huge misconception. Instead, what is recycled is what can be recycled profitably by garbage companies. My name is Tom Zaki, and I'm the founder and CEO of TerraCycle & Loop. TerraCycle is a global waste management company. We're headquartered here in New Jersey, but operate nationally in 22 countries. Our mission is not just to manage waste, but to eliminate the idea of waste. And we do that by recycling hard to recycle things, then uh, integrating recycled waste back into consumer products, finally through loop elevating supply chains from being disposable to fully reusable. Tom had the, the real foresight to take a look at an area that no one was actually doing, and that's the recycling of number seven plastic. Prior to TerraCycle, all multi-layer constructed materials were put in the landfill. Many people who thought you could not recycle number seven plastics because they wouldn't be any use. We were successful in showing the rest of the world what could be done with some of the materials that they considered non-recyclable. TerraCycle focuses on the things you can't put in your recycling bin. I think technically it's in the thousands of different waste streams, so everything from dirty diapers to cigarette butts, from toothbrushes to cosmetic packaging, and it goes on and on and on. So, for example, you know, we take juice pouches and turn them into something like uh, uh, lunch boxes, coated paper into fire logs or corks into cork boards. Here's another one where we take chip bags. We turn it into this type of plastic and turn it into dog bowls or toilet seats. You can see everything can be recycled in the end. The fundamental issue of recycling is one of economics. The entire essence of our business model is turned on by finding stakeholders, could be manufacturers, could be retailers, that are willing to fund whatever it really costs to collect and recycle that waste stream versus whatever we can sell the material for. And once we have that economic unlock, then we can go out and collect and recycle just about anything. All of these chairs and tables were made from juice pouch material. We shredded the materials, melted it, made it into granules, and then the granules were actually formed into lumber to make these chairs and tables. We're dependent on finding stakeholders who really want to invest and do the right thing. So you can go out there and recycle things you could never recycle before absolutely for free. Everyone has their role to play. I think there's great potential for consumers to have an impact. I think as individuals we don't always know how to have that impact. The level of environmental consciousness amongst young people now is really high, but it's not just a consciousness. We're actually on the streets being vocal about this, which is an exciting change actually. From a consumer experience, the way you would experience TerraCycle is you could go to TerraCycle.com, our website, and type in any waste stream you want to recycle. And then if there is a program that's been funded by a stakeholder, like a brand or a retailer, you're going to see a free program appear to you. And if there isn't someone funding, then you'll see paid alternatives. Now, let's say you enter into a free program, and that entire experience is free to the consumer. Now, someone's paying the bill, and the people who are paying are, in these examples, manufacturers and retailers. The price of your product isn't going to increase because of those costs. What they're doing is instead of putting money into advertising, they're putting it into recycling because they find that by enabling recyclability on a product, consumers may choose their brand over a different brand. Companies would do best to have their design groups look at a circular, sustainable way of designing their products because it comes down to design we focus on setting up solutions where solutions don't exist. 
it would be great if TerraCycle didn't need to exist. I mean, that would be an ultimate dream that garbage doesn't exist as a problem and that then we wouldn't need an organization like this to be out there. But until there isn't a problem, we're here to try to bring some level of solution. The circular dream is not recycling. The, the transition to the circular economy needs to kind of have two parts to it. So one part would be thinking quite clearly about you know, redesign. How do we design this in a way that there isn't waste falling out at the bottom, which needs to be recycled in the first place? If we're really kind of pushing for serious change, I think we need to be thinking in that area, like how do we design out this stuff as much as possible? But we know that transitions don't happen overnight. There's a massive cleanup job to do. For us as individuals, the short-term step is to vote with our money for the future we want with what we buy. People are waking up more than ever.